it's Jill with Crick Flicks and back again. Not doing scrapbooking tonight. I am finishing up a personalized order for the theme of, I thought it was Coco Melon, but whenever my granddaughter watches on TV, it sounds more like they're saying Coco Melly. So I'm not sure how the name is pronounced, but they are going to be six total centerpieces here. I'm trying to sort them out. I could have done that first. Well, let me just move them over. Um, I wanted to start out by saying this message is to Martha Martinez. Your order for your your um, Cookie Monster is going out in the morning. And I was going to do try and do a quick video for you to show you... Um, I couldn't put everything on them. I did birthday caps for them, and I did balloons for them to be holding, and I did um, gift boxes. But I couldn't put it all together, the hats, because it made them way too tall to fit in the box. So I put all the pieces inside the pack. In, inside the pack. The, the, the birthday hats are double-sided and open at the bottom, and there's tape along the edge of the bottom so that when you slip them on over, wherever you want to place them on Cookie Monster, you peel off the red on the tape and it'll, and you can stick the hats to them. Um, again, I don't, I didn't want to ship them like that because I would have had to make them smaller in order to, to fit the hat. And then there's the gift boxes and um, balloons you can put anywhere that you want. And what will be in there is a page like this of Pop Dots. If you just take these off and stick them to the back, you can stick them to your centerpiece, however you want them. Um, there's a, there's quite a bit, there's quite a few of them there, so you use whatever you want. And if you don't want them, you don't have to use them. So that was for you, Martha. And now I'm going to go and finish up this one. This little boy, it's his birthday, and I believe he's turning one. He looks like he's one, but I think it's one. And I used the the cocoa melons, the melon itself had um the little the little character in there and I removed him and put the little boy in there. So um again these are all going to be two feet and let me see here. I know you've seen me do this before. I want to add some um elements to give it a little bit of dimension but um guys I can't believe it every single time I use that word I, I need to stop using it. Because every time I use it, I I think of the word dimension, dementia, instead of dimension, 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 whatever. I always do that, and it makes me think back every time I say it. Uh, let me see where I want to put these. These great big, huge tongue depressor sticks my husband got for me, and I absolutely love them for the, the big pieces like this. Um, versus a ton of little pieces. However, you can't use... The, whoops, I just grabbed the same one again. I use a mixture of the sizes um, of the pieces. And I found some... The same place, I think. I can't remember where I got them. Some of the popsicle sticks that are shorter. And then I'm using um, coffee creamer sticks. Uh, and the places that I can't fit, fit the sticks, but I still want a little bit of... Of strength because I don't I don't like the pieces bending um, like ta particularly tails I got these off so for skinny legs like a Barbie and her skinny little legs I can think of other ones that these work great they're not really very very sturdy I wouldn't use them right there was going to be a lot of stress on it because they won't hold up they're they're thin but just enough to between the glue and the sticks, it works. I can make it work. And I didn't want to put that there. So, um, I, I remember in a, a film not, not too long ago, I mentioned on the film that I believe the eco tank was being um, disconnect, discontinued because the, the 16500, which is what I use, you can no longer get and I didn't see a replacement so I thought maybe they just got out of making the the eco tank printers but somebody yesterday 
had messaged me that she had gotten one, and it's now the 16600, the Epson EcoTank printer um, that I absolutely love. And when I thought that they weren't going to be making it anymore, I kind of panicked thinking, oh, um, I have two of them because I, my daughter has gotten so busy in her real estate that she she helps out with glitter and things like that. She doesn't doesn't print things out anymore. So I confiscated the other printer. Um, she needs to print things for her real estate, but they don't need to have this Ecotank printer. So she went out and got a $50 printer that would suffice for what she needed it so that I could bring my, have my backup on my Ecotank because after have, after using that, the amount of money you save in, in um, ink or the cost of ink is just unbelievable. I mean, it cut my costs down. Uh, I can't even say by half. It, it, I fill my tanks probably twice a year. I have to fill them. And each replacement bottle costs like 20 bucks. And each replacement bottle will fill my tank twice. So I probably spend at the outside most in a year $100 in ink where before I was spending that much a month, at least, if not more. I, um, I can't remember, I can't remember that far back, guys, when I did the, when my husband did all the, the cost of materials, uh, when he, when we were first opening their shop, uh, people asked me, how do I arrive at my prices? And all I can say is I spent five years, five years plus some, figuring this out and getting what I needed and my husband figuring out the cost of materials in order to figure out he had we had to time everything I did which in the beginning um is really hard because in the very very beginning uh I was learning and um I wished I would have had my videos when I started this because if you saw how I used to do things when I first started uh crafting or do whatever I don't know because I started out by this was going to be just strictly scrapbooking um the amount the amount of work that went into each piece because I used to do it where I used a, a, a program called scale sure cuts a lot and the Cricut and um taking images and separating them with the sure cuts a lot then going in and and um piecing them together and didn't have print and cut back then. Everything was layered and a lot of people loved that and I did love that when I was doing it for scrapbooking and when I first started doing it, I loved it. However, ever since I've been started doing the, the print and cut, um, I no longer ever use a Cricut effort. So people ask me if they could do it on their Explorer. Uh, don't know because I don't have the Explorer, never tried it. I, I tried once to download their software. There's our first one, Little Birthday Boy and the characters. These was th this was three, no, it was two. This was, these two came together as one image and then, then him inside the, the um, watermelon. And I'm using my, this kind of box, this kind of base I like versus th this, one here. Be, this one's taller and I love that on the smaller pieces, but the larger pieces I need the bigger base so that they don't topple over because they're pretty big. Now we're going to take this one. I've got and one of these put together, I do believe, and my husband's going to be very angry at me at this one because this one, this table is two feet, and this one's as lar this is lar larger than two feet. Um, what I did for him is this headset was on a different image. Then I took it off and put it on the little boy. I took his legs off because the cake was covering his legs, and um, got the little boy here. And then on the birthday cake, it I it personalized it with the the baby with his name on it. Um, and, and in the middle here, whoever this was for had the number 13 on it. I, I can't imagine a 13 year old having a birthday party of this, but I don't know. I, I changed it to a one 
Okay, but there we go. Now I know he's one. That's how, that's how I knew. I knew because I did it as a one. You know, um, guys, I am, I don't know if I said this on the last video or not, because I don't, I'm forgetting how long I'm going between video. My husband, first of all, I'm going to say he's had both the, the, uh, immunizations, both of his COVID shots now, and I get my first one on Wednesday, uh, then three weeks later, I guess it is, you get your second one, and, um, my son and his wife have both got theirs. Uh, she and my other daughter-in-law has her. She's first line. She's a nurse, and so she got hers right away. And um, my son and his wife that have them get them because her sister is a pharmacist. And at the end of the day, if they had any vaccines left over, they had they could take that off of them to family members. So um, they got theirs quickly. And I'm watching everybody in my family get theirs, which I I'm, I'm just can't wait till they're all done. But once I get mine done, I'm hoping that my husband and my brother-in-law and I can all drive out to Denver to see my sister-in-law. Her health isn't real good, and I would love to go out and see her. Um, She's just a hoot, but we haven't seen her in, it's been a while now because her health hasn't been good, so she hasn't been able to fly. Um, her, in the past, I've done videos with my niece, great niece, um, Tati, and my other niece, Adi, that come and visit all the time in the summer. They're away at college. Now, one moved to New York. She graduated from college and, and moved away, and... Then my other niece um, came out with her four sons last summer, and my nephew, great nephew, after he came here for the first time, he decided he absolutely loved it here, so he goes to the UW-Madison, and so they'll be coming out more to visit, and I don't know where I was headed with this, guys. I just, um, <laughs> my husband says, I have a really hard time staying on target, on track, or whatever, and I said, that is so. And I think part of that is having having retired where I was used to interacting with people uh, a lot. It, it I'm trying to figure out why I go off on a tangent. It's like that the other people I talk to are my children. And they don't really like to hear a lot of what I have to say, which probably a lot of you don't either. But deal with it. Um, anyway... <laughs> keep track and everything um I was going to say because I, I positive I I did a video on YouTube recently announcing that my daughter Amy was pregnant again um she was the one that's divorced and remarried and this is her third pregnancy um after her husband Eight years prior to their getting married and getting met together, get married or whatever, um, had a the V done when he was from his first wife, and so when she showed up pregnant, um, they were both thrown for a loop. And my daughter, when she told me, I was all excited, not realizing the what that actually not. I just knew she was she had wanted more children. She was devastated when. She got a divorce because she wanted more kids and and she would have never, ever, ever, even if she thought there was a chance of getting a divorce, she would have never gotten married. Um, did not believe in divorce. I was 100% against it. However, when you're out there and you're playing around um, or you catch your hubby, or meet your hubby's uh, play, playmate, comes in well then you kind of think things differently so anyway she they went on to have my grandson Blake who is now going to be five at the end of May and I cannot imagine their lives without him and my daughter said oh she just wanted one more so that Blake wasn't by himself when the others that are older are all in school and Christmas two years ago she had a shirt on that said oh dear 
I'm pregnant. And it was a Christmas dinner. And it, um, she'd put a Rudolph or something. I said, oh dear, I'm pregnant. That's how she told me. I don't know how I even noticed her shirt. Um, but I was super excited because I knew she wanted to have another one. Well, then we got Burke. So then she's sitting there with three little boys. And, you know, her, her, her husband's like, okay, that's it. No more, you know. She said, yep, no more. A few months later, oh, I don't know, maybe one more. And he's like, yeah, no more, no more, no more. Well, surprise, surprise. For Christmas this year, she asked for, she really wanted another baby. It was her Christmas. It was a joke um, to her hubby that she wanted for Christmas. All she wanted was one more baby. And sure enough, the week before Christmas or a few days after, I don't remember the timing on it, found out she was pregnant again. And I probably told this story. I'm thrilled to death, and it's a little girl. So this one will be the last. It's a little girl. So um, my granddaughter, uh, Charlie, is nine. She just turned nine. And uh, she, she wanted her mom to have another baby really bad. And when she found out she was pregnant, she was thrilled. And, and um, mom said, you know, she said, oh, I hope it's a girl. And my daughter had said, you know, it, it, we don't know what it is. And it could be a boy and we're going to be okay. It's not. And she said, no, 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 that, I don't care what it is. You know, we're having another baby. I don't care. And um, which was a really good answer. And she had said to me, she didn't care what it was, but she really would like a girl. So you can imagine how excited she was when she found out they were having a girl. They went to Minnesota this weekend to visit family. His brother actually lives up there. And my daughter was going to take my granddaughter to the Mall of America and go shopping to try and find some couple matching outfits for her and her new baby sister. Um, they didn't find any outfits, so matching. Um, she picked out some outfits for her, but nothing matching. Okay, now we get into Coco Melli himself. I, this is the, the one that I took apart where I took the headset off of it, took him out, put the little boy in, and, and went from there. Again, this is two feet. I haven't attached the dog yet. I wanted it two feet, but the reason I didn't make this two feet tall was because the melon then would be two feet wide and this thing would be mammoth. And it's just, number one, my husband just absolutely gets, gets a uh, little, little uh, upset when they come to him that big because they, the, he has to, uh, we usually don't have that large of a box in our stock of shipping boxes that it takes. Uh, and they take a huge box and they're a pain. So that's why uh, sometimes when somebody wants something in two feet, uh, there's a lot of images. And I beat this one like a dead horse because I've said it over and over and over again. I make it see the two feet high or two feet wide. But this would have been two feet high and two feet wide. And it would have been mammoth. They aren't even cute when they're that big, honestly, I don't think. I think they're just that they overpower the table. I just don't like them like that. But I won't make them like that anyway. And balancing them when they get too big. Not balance is it, b balancing as much as it is. Um, uh, they, they have a tendency to tilt. I just, they're a little bit harder to do when they're that big. They can be done. And you can reinforce them differently. And there are all sorts of things you can do, but I'm not even going to go in, get into that because I don't make them that large. Oh, if I would have thought of it, I helped my daughter for um, Christmas. See, I can skip from one thing to the other without batting the lash. Um, this year for Christmas, I had on my Christmas list this little, min, um, small, what it didn't say miniature, it said small, table saw kind of more of a crafting table saw and I thought oh my gosh that would be so nice to have because there's times when I'm up here I need I need something cut or or I need a peg hole drilled or whatever and I'm running up and down the stairs all the time which isn't 
anything bad because we all use the exercise. And I told my daughter I wanted this saw for, for uh, Christmas. So I kept sending her the link, not knowing because she never responded to me if she opened it or what she thought or anything. So after I sent it to her for about the fourth time, she said, I, I take it you really want that saw that you've sent me like 10 times. Well, I was laughing because I, mean, I know I sent it to her, but it wasn't something I was dying to have or didn't know how much I would really use it. And it didn't come. It was from China. And I learned, um, I learned the hard way. No, I didn't learn. I just got burnt a few times. I didn't learn because I got burnt a few times, which means more than once. Ordering from these sites that, number one, not reading the feedback, and number two, learning that the feedback was the exact same on numerous sites. I think they just, I don't know what, but anyway, it didn't come. And so she was really upset because it wasn't cheap. And if it didn't come, there wasn't any way of her tracking it or anything. It was, it was 200 bucks, which which isn't, well, I didn't think was horrible, 150 or 200, I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, that cheap. And it finally came after Christmas, and she brought me over the box, or it came here, or, or she brought me the box or whatever, and I looked, looked at it, and I'm going, now this is a joke. I said, that this has got to be a joke. The box was this big. <laughs> it was like this, and it opened up, and sure enough, it was the saw. It looks like a toy for a dollhouse or something. It's this big. It's behind me. I don't think you can see it. I can probably hold it up. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but I'll pull it out a little bit. The saw, this is it. This was the saw that I had to have. And when I saw it, um, I didn't want her to let on that I had no idea that it was that tiny. And what the hell was I going to do with the saw that size? So anyway, um, my husband's looking. He goes, that's really cool, though. You know, think in his head, he was thinking of things that he could use it for. And I thought, well, thank God, because he thinks it's going to be of use. Well, I put it in up here, and I put a plastic bag at the to collect the sawdust at the end of the hose that runs behind and it's a great saw to have to cut my dowel rods um, I always have to have my husband I'll call him hey, can you come cut some dowel rods and I use the wire cutter to, to cut most or have over the years the problem that I have with doing that when they start to get dull the ends of my dowel rods get real ragged and they're I just don't like that they they just start to get very very they don't cut or clip with those little scissors that easy and they get very uneven or, or jagged. And I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know what the word for it is. But um, so I started having my husband cut them just so I could get a cleaner cut on them. And I don't think I have any that, it's even like this piece. This has got this, this torn up end on it. Well, sometimes my little cutters would cut like that. And I don't care because they're getting glued in, but I'd have to t figure out which side I wanted to glue that didn't show and didn't go into the base. Well, now I cut them on my little saw. Would I recommend anybody go out and get a saw like that to cut dowel rods? Absolutely not. But since I had it, I better find use for it. But I can also cut um, popsicle sticks and, and any of these kind of sticks. I, if I need a thinner piece, and I need it stronger. I found that there's all sorts of uses for that little itty bitty saw. And um, now I actually really like it. But again, would I recommend anybody get it? No. Um, but I never would have thought ever would I have even entered my mind. And it didn't tell the specs, it, you know, on the specs it told you what you used it for. And on the video that they show it, they don't show anything but the saw. You can't even see the hands of anybody using the saw. They, that they did it very, they were very clever on the way they did it. Because if I would have seen the hands with the saw, I would have known the saw was that big. But you couldn't see anything. You just see it running and, 
um, I don't remember what the advertisement would look like, the video. It was a few months ago, so I don't remember that far back, guys. But I thought it was pretty funny, and my, my daughter said, you didn't know it was that small? And I know she's thinking, ooh, <laughs> that better been what you wanted, and you have some use for it because... But anyway, that's the, that's the story of my little itty-bitty toy saw. And no, guys, it does not have enough use. Then I thought, <laughs> I make gnomes with my daughter, and we use these round balls for the gnome. Here's one of my St. Patty's Day gnomes, and here's the ball for the nose. Well, my daughter had accidentally um, gotten some round balls, but they weren't cut out flat because the, the, the round balls are flat on one side with a hole, like a doorknob thing screwed on. And she bought some that were round, round ball. And I thought, oh, with my new saw, I can cut the edge off flat. And then we can just drill them in, and then they'll be just like these other ones. Well, uh, that is not that is also not what the saw was intended for. That thing, when I started to cut it, it flew out of my hands. And thank God it flew in the, dire flew in the direction of the wall instead of my direction. It... It flew out of my hands and flew into the wall and nearly went <laughs> went through. It hit the woodwork around the window, actually, because it was right over there. Um, it has a lot of force, that little itty-bitty saw. So I can't use it to saw off the back of the balls. Then I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll hold the ball for pliers because I have a whole bunch of those and I want to cut the backs off. So I'll hold them with a grip and a pliers and try and, and go through and see. I forgot I was going to try and do that because I cut a whole bunch of them. I hate to waste them. So that'll be for my next video, whether or not I could get the saw through. Um, Samantha, I saw your message that you were, and Kelly both, that you were happy to see some scrapbooking um, along uh, along my line of videos recently. Um, and I actually wanted to do some more because business has been pretty slow with this pandemic and everything. And then all of a sudden... I just got super, super busy. And so I had to put my um, scrapbooking behind me again. Um, gnomes, I think right now I'm, I'm trying to catch up on, here's one that I didn't cut with my saw and I don't like it. The ends are just messy. Um, gnomes, my daughter keeps telling me she's gonna make all the hats so we can get working on these gnomes. She wanted to do another show and she's in Minnesota this weekend, and I'm getting bombarded with gnomes. And she left for Minnesota, and she said, I'm going to make you a bunch of hats, and I'll drop them off on my way out of town so I could work on them this weekend. And she didn't get around to do it because she is sick all the time. She is uh, another one of her pregnancies where she's just sick always. So she didn't do them, and I said, well... Pray to God you didn't go and book a show because I'm not going to take on that kind of stress. You know, but, but uh, they're coming through Etsy and they're all sitting over here ready to get dressed and decorated. That I'm not going to film though. The gnomes and how we do them. Uh, last year we did them at, at Christmas time. And my ex neighbor, who's the next door to me, um, who's always been in contact with me, uh, just been friends over the years um and she had reached out to my daughter about the gnomes last year for christmas she wanted to she was going to come back by and pick up four of them and uh, she didn't show up and my daughter's like that's just really weird why wouldn't she just didn't call or anything she just didn't show up and my daughter started selling them on the local market what's it called marketplace locally here she started selling them on on there and uh shortly after she started selling them and this friend didn't show up to pick hers up had them the exact same she didn't even do a variation and you know i don't care about that everybody does that sort of thing except i would never do it to a friend of mine in the same town in the same market but anyway she had been asking my daughter all these questions. Oh, how are they made? Do they them filled with rice or do you use beans or whatever? And Amy just assumed she was asking because she just, she wanted to know um, for whatever, just she wanted to know what the body was made out of. And well, that wasn't why. 
So anyway, uh, that was a real funny story that that uh, my my daughter had sent her a message and just said, oh, "Wow, I can't believe you just did that. You asked me all these questions, and now they're in, you're in the same market. And they live in the same town. I mean, my daughter lives right nearby where I am, but she lives in a little outskirts, and that's where this." Uh, woman leaves and next thing you know her daughter who's in high school and her son and everybody got involved with it and I love social media I tell you that it, it, I thought well that hit the maturity level of the mat just unbelievable for one daughter because my my daughter had confronted her not confronted but just asked her very kindly my daughter hasn't got a mean bone in her um, very kindly said, you know, wow, this is kind of, you know, made, made me feel bad. I had somebody do that to me that wasn't a friend. It was taking all my, posting the, my exact same, you know, even using my pictures. But but um, my daughter was asking her more as a friend, like, it wasn't a very friendly thing to do. And um, then her daughter didn't know that that little girl with that, the beautiful little girl could have such a foul mouth but man she went off like a prom dress to my daughter and my daughter was showing us and we're going i don't know what what would have ever prompted somebody to react that way if you just said hey you know that's kind of you know why would you do that in the same market or whatever at least what i've always said to everybody just at least make a variation of it but um so it's not quite so so obvious but it uh i find it to be comical and i don't know how i went off on that one either guys i really need to get out and uh probably my daughter had said something to me about getting a part-time job so I had somebody to talk to so that i didn't drive everybody in the family nuts because i don't stay quiet Okay, let me let me see. One, two, three, four, five, and one's downstairs. So this is the last of it. This one, what I had to do, this is one that would have been two feet tall and pretty wide. This is a huge, uh, this you could hide behind at the table. I don't know what table that's going to go on, but it's big. Uh, what I ended up doing is, given the size, I had to cut it in three so what I decided to do is cut the cake out first that was on here and then cut this part in half. So it was seamed here, here, and here. Um, in the back, you can see I ran a seam down here and then around the cake. That was how I was able to cut it. Uh, it didn't fit to cut it right down the middle. And I wanted to be able to cover up. I didn't want all those seams showing. So that's how I did it. And this is my last one. I've been... Oh, printing out stuff, getting it ready to actually assemble, and just wishing I would get some of it done. So, anyway, 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 love the guessing if that's straight. The sticks also, when you're piecing them together, um, try and pull, put your, your sticks down, your reinforcement, Go, try and go over the seams as much as you can because that just reinforces them from lifting. Because uh, they're just taped together and and they can lift. They're not made as a permanent home decor. Um, so, I love it when I get a bent popsicle stick. But, and we've got two feet of snow out there and it's been so unbelievably cold for the last month that there's been no, there's no snow melting. So every time it snows, it just piles on top. And it's absolutely gorgeous out there to look at it. My backyard has not been stepped in other than a rabbit, I think. Uh, so it's just, it's beautiful. And I, I think it's just beautiful. But I don't go out anywhere, so I don't get to, I don't, have to drive in it or I don't have to go heat up a car in 40 degree below, I should say 40 below weather. Um, 
Um, I tell my husband, him and I go anywhere to my daughters. We don't really go anywhere but to my kid's house. But I always tell them, start the car up. Get the car going. Because um, I won't go out and get in a cold car. I leave my coat in my car. I don't like to wear a coat, a coat in the car. So I just leave my coat in there. So my car, the car's got to be warm before I go out. Because I don't have a coat on. And they're too cumbersome to wear in a car. I can't stand it. So, I don't think I did a very good job of sorting my sticks out here. Whew. I keep telling my hot husband, I say, I feel like I'm going through menopause again. I'm hot all the time. Sweating. I said, how could it be? But 20 years later, I'm going through it again? Lord have mercy. Maybe not 20 years. I'm going to date myself that bad, but long enough. It's so freaking hot. And there's no way of opening my window um, to cool it down a little bit. So I go stand outside. I opened my window. My husband would feel it immediately because he's got thin. His skin, I think, is as thin as onion paper. He, um, he would know it. And the furnace would run. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be a real good idea, guys. So I just sit and suffer. No big deal. Okay, here we go. This little boy is going to have a, well, he doesn't realize how cute he looks in there. He's little too little, but he likes this cartoon, so he's going to like it. I guarantee it. I had my husband buy me a new rug because I couldn't move my chair across my rug anymore. And I thought it was because it, it was a too high of a pile on my rug. And so I said, give me something more of an indoor-outdoor. No pile on it. And so that pins wouldn't stick in it and it wouldn't hide everything that I really needed to find when I dropped it. But I still can't move my chair. So, and this is a new chair. Or he, I mean, he, not that new, but um, the wheels had gotten so messed up on the last one. They, I go through chairs a lot. And I noticed on this one because I'm trying to work in such a tight space, trying to do too much and have all my stuff at hand here, I keep backing up and spinning around in my chair and hitting the printer and hitting the table. Whatever I'm hitting is completely chewed up the back, back of my chair. But I don't want to go tell him, hey, I need another new chair if the back of mine's all torn up. I guess if he, I could tell him if he'd get me a decent chair, you know, get me a real leather nice chair, that wouldn't happen. But, since we share the same pot, I do not want a leather chair. And I did not mean reefer, guys. I meant my, my pot of monies. I'd be buying it as well. So, and I don't want to spend, I don't know why I thought of <clears throat> pot. I guess that dates me. Dates me a lot, guys. There we go. Oh, but he's standing straight. So I got it. All right. I will put those all together and get some pictures taken. Um, I do have some photos, my daughter's Christmas pictures uh, that I got. I want um, I want to do some scrapbook. And guys, I really do. I'm going to try and get some gnomes done here and get caught up with some work. And then maybe I can slip in some scrapbooking Um pages on the next videos. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, but thank you guys for watching and everybody have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.